my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. If you're new here, my name is Suzanne and I'm a stay-at-home mom to three girls. Today for my video, I'm going to be doing a Thanksgiving prep and planning video series. So this is the first one in the series and I just thought that I would share my knowledge with you all. I have hosted Thanksgiving in a few different houses for many years now and this is our third year hosting it at this house. I love having people over. I've always loved entertaining. I used to be an event planner. I went to school for event planning so entertaining and hostessing has been a passion of mine for a really long time. I have tried things that have failed. I've tried things that have been successful and I thought that I would bring you this video series if you find yourself hosting or if you just had any questions about having people over, having Thanksgiving dinner in your home. I know it can be a super daunting and overwhelming thing and the first few times I did it I felt the exact same way and I do have to say that even after so many years of doing it I still get nervous, I still have things that don't go to plan and that's totally okay because that's life and each year is memorable most likely because of the things that don't go to plan and usually it's just a more fun experience because of it. However, you don't want things to not go to plan if if you can help it so I'm going to sit with you today and go through my video series that I'm posting um, today and then within the next couple days so that that way you can watch these and maybe it will help you if you are going to be hosting Thanksgiving dinner at your house soon. One of my biggest tips that I can say really is just invaluable when it comes to having any get together at your home is just to plan everything out in advance. It doesn't matter how you like to do it. If you enjoy planning on your phone, if you are a paper planner, person which I printed this out this year to try and it's just a Thanksgiving planning kit so I'm going to share this with you in just a minute you like to have things written out in front of you and that helps you whatever it is that you like to do and however you do it I kind of do a little bit of both just to help keep myself organized and know exactly what I need exactly when I need it generally when you start planning for Thanksgiving uh, you want to start planning at least three weeks out I just feel like it gives me the most amount of time I kind of break it into a timeline so the first week we which would be this video, is really just planning your menu, deciding how many guests you're going to have, getting things ready in your home as far as what kind of serving dishes you're going to need, what kind of space you have. This first week is for taking account of everything going on so that you can plan and have everything ready to move forward and have it go as smoothly as possible. I just say plan every single thing that you can down to what time things need to go in the oven, if there's anything that can be cooked a day in advance that you can heat up the day of Thanksgiving, whatever it is that you need to plan. Planning everything out is my number one tip. Once you have your plan, then the next thing that you can do is just start to implement it. So when you know how many guests you're gonna have, then you can start touching base with them, reaching out to see who's able to come, giving them an RSVP date if you need to. I also am a huge fan of delegating Thanksgiving, so if you have any family members members who have offered to bring dishes or help with any of the cooking, then I say definitely take them up on that. So this is a great time to do that. Once you know your menu, which is also one of the biggest steps of the planning process, then you can start to delegate to different family members who's going to bring what and that is going to make your life so much easier and it also really uh, allows people to feel like they are a part of Thanksgiving as well. So it's a family holiday or a friend holiday and it's really fun for everyone to take part and feel like they are literally bringing something to the table. Now I've already mentioned it but obviously planning out your menu is going to be one of the most important tasks that you'll have to tackle in your pre-planning process. Thanksgiving is probably one of the big meals of the year if not the biggest and the food is going to be front and center stage so you want to make sure that you know a roundabout idea of what you're going to be making maybe you don't have everything 100% nailed down but you kind of want to start to get an idea of what kind of sides you want to have dessert appetizers obviously the turkey and how you are going to want to cook that so there's a lot that goes into Thanksgiving Day food that you're going to want to plan out ahead of time. Also, you want to make sure you do your shopping in advance as much as possible, especially if there's anything that are canned goods and things that are going to last you. I do not recommend saving all of your shopping until the week of because stores are going to be really busy. A lot of things close early for the holiday and you don't want to risk not having the ingredients that you need for one of the things that you're going to be prepping. I really like to start planning my menu about three weeks out and that way I know within the two week to one and a half 
half week mark that I need to start doing my shopping now or delegating those food items to other family or friends who might be coming so that they can prepare as well. Nobody wants to be left without anything that they need for one of the biggest meals of the year. Something else that's really helpful to do for Thanksgiving dinner if you're hosting is to just go around your house while you're doing your pre-planning and take stock of anything that you might need to purchase. So having things like extra toilet paper on hand, paper towels, serving dishes that you know that you're going to need, anything along those lines. How are you gonna serve your food? Are you using paper plates and plastic utensils? Are you using fine china? All of those things, if you know that in advance, it's really going to help you so that you are going to have less stress the day of because you'll have already thought of it and kind of have an idea in the back of your head of what it is you wanna do. Another thing that's important to kind of pre-plan is how you're going to be seating everyone. So are you doing a big sit down dinner at a table? Are you going to be doing it buffet style? Are you going to have people bring everything for a potluck? How are you gonna set that out? Do you need to rent tables and chairs? I really think that thinking about all these things as soon as three weeks out so you can get table and chairs from family or friends or rent them from a company if need be or decide how much serve where. Are you gonna need chafing dishes? I mean, these are all things that are just really helpful to know as far out as possible so that you can have everything you need and not be scrambling around at the last minute. So like I said, I usually plan in my phone or I will write things down by hand, but I like to have it on my phone just so I always have it with me. This year, I printed out this PDF file of a Thanksgiving planner. I'm going to show you what it looks like page by page, but I do want to say that this is my first time using one of these. It's um, something that I purchased on Etsy, so I will leave the link down below if you think that this is a tool that might help you in your planning as well. But I just thought that I would try it. Usually everything gets on my phone, and after a while it just starts to get really piled up and kind of hard to read, and I have to thumb through a bunch of notes pages to see where I left everything. I probably will still use my phone, but having something laid out in front of you in black and white just so that you can see it and make changes if you need to and then you can put the finished product into your phone or vice versa, have it on your phone and then put the finished product in here so that you can have it to flip through. And then you can have this every year. So it was like I think around $3, three or $4 to print this out or to purchase the file and then I printed it out at home. It's just super helpful with everything that it suggests for you to write down. So I will go through each section with you um, as quickly as possible just to give you an idea of what it looks like. And then like I said, I will link it down below so that if you think this is something that you might be interested in using, you can purchase it and print one out for yourself too. All right, so this is the Thanksgiving planner that I printed. They had so many different kinds that you could print, but I just thought this one was simple and still really pretty. So it goes through everything that you could possibly want. If you're on a budget like most of us are, you have a budget overview, what you're spending on decoration, tableware, food, and any extra things. You can itemize everything. I mean, they have lots of room on this. So they even give you places for miscellaneous because we know those pop up. You also have an invite list. So any of your guests that you have coming, you can go ahead and put their names here. And then here's a guest list as well. If you need extra spaces to put that down. And then this is what's really helpful is your menu planner. This is going to be one of the most helpful things for you when doing your Thanksgiving day planning. So it has appetizers, entrees, sides, desserts, and beverages. If you're going to have any of those things, then you can write everything down here and have this at a glance so you can access it easily and know exactly what's going on. This is also helpful. It's a Thanksgiving cooking su um, supply list. So you've got what dishes you're cooking on this side and then all of the ingredients that you're going to need to make them on the other side. And then there's a couple of those pages. Now I printed, printed this front to back. You obviously can print it um, single-sided if that helps you as well. So it's got cooking, baking, and then this is what I was talking about, your recipe plan. So anything that you can, you can list make ahead, prep time, oven temp, how many servings, and then the cook time. And this will help you once you're trying to plan the day of or two days out, what's gonna need to go in the oven and when. So you're not scrambling like I was. It also gives you a grocery list, a cooking schedule, a serving guide which is really helpful so how much of each thing you might want to have for people to eat it also gives you a drink serving guide over here are your recipes these are really nice you can even create a folder so that you can have these as a keepsake so i might print some of these out additionally for our go-to recipes each year and put this in my thanksgiving planning binder for the next year that we host 
This gives you a timeline. Now this goes as far out as two months. I don't plan two months out, but um, usually around the one month to three week mark is where I get started. It also gives you the day of planner and it times it out, which is really helpful. So this is a super type A thing. Um, you might not use all of these pages, but it is nice to have them just in case. It gives you uh, October um, calendar and then it also gives you a weekly planner as well. Here's the decor inventory if you have a lot of decor that you're going to be using. I really don't. I will show you what I'm going to use in one of my next videos. Um, but that's helpful to have if you know that you're going to be doing a huge meal and you're going to be having lots of decorations in your space. It also does it room by room which is again really helpful. This is your quick plan, so just something to have at a glance so that you can look at it really quickly. And then it gives you this long page for all of your shopping list items if you need that. Here's your to-do list, and then it gives you a chore list. So this is what I was talking about with your house cleaning that you're gonna be doing. So it gives a nice checklist so that you can check these off and then go add anything extra that you might wanna get done as well. Here's the November calendar. I think this went with the other one. And then the last page is going to be your notes. And then on the back of the November calendar, it gives you an outfit planner as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and tuck this back where my October calendar was. <laughs> there, and that's everything. And then you can write down any of your additional notes right here on the back. So again, this is just really helpful if you are one of those extra planning people. This is really helpful to have and you can keep it in your keepsake binder and have it year after year so you can always reference it or print a new one each year. So let me know in the comments if you end up using a planner or if you've used one in the past and you find it really helpful because I'm really interested to see if anybody else benefits from the use of planners like this. Something that I like to do around the two week mark is to really start cleaning my home. I don't wanna wait too close to the day but but you don't want to do it too far in advance to where things might get really dirty again so if it's anything deep cleaning i'll try to take care of that in advance i like to go touch up the baseboards and wipe down the walls just things that i don't do during my normal weekly cleaning and then the week of i will obviously probably save my weekly cleaning to as close to thanksgiving day as possible everything will look and smell as nice as it can for when guests come over usually i do my cleaning um on Fridays or Saturdays. So for Thanksgiving, I will probably do it the Tuesday or Monday. Uh, that way it'll be clean enough a few days out, but I won't be rushing to get it done at the very last minute. One of the things that I love to do when I'm hosting is just go around my home and see if there's any areas where I can improve anything. Uh, we do have people over quite a bit, but uh, obviously for the holidays, this is a large amount of people um, and that's not the norm for us. So I like to just kind of go around my house and find areas where maybe things can be touched up or I can add things or maybe put some extra decoration or whatever it might be. My house could use, I don't always really spend a lot of money doing it. Sometimes I'll just shop my house and move stuff around. But if there's ways that I can make things look a little bit nicer or more inviting, then I will try to do that before I host a big event as well. I'm very excited because the company Asoko Lighting reached out to me and asked if I would be interested in trying out one of their products, which I was really, really excited to do because it is an under cabinet light bar. My kitchen is very small. I don't know if you've seen it in videos. If you watched any of my previous videos, it is not very big and it can feel dark and kind of cave-like. There is a window, which is great, but it's one window and then the rest of the kitchen is completely closed off from the rest of the house. Because of this, it can definitely feel a little bit dark. It can be hard to see sometimes. And when you're entertaining, you obviously want things to feel as bright and welcoming and as just easy to find things as possible when you have people over. So I thought having lighting under the cabinet would be the perfect opportunity to add a little bit more light into my kitchen as well as just make it easier to see. The lighting options that they have at Asoko are really, really cool because a lot of them are for under the cabinet. They also have some different options if you're looking for other things around your home. They're rechargeable, so instead of changing out batteries or having to swap anything out, all you'll have to do is remove the light bar and charge it up and then it's good to go for the next time. I thought I would go ahead and unbox it. They sent it to me. I have already taken out of the mailbox, but this is the box that it came in. I'm gonna go ahead and take it out and show you what it looks like. That way you can see it and then I will 
show you how it sticks up onto the cabinet. What's well, really cool because I have to say my husband was a little reluctant when I told him uh, that I was going to mount something to the cabinet because he does not like the idea of drilling into the cabinet. The cool thing about this is it comes with some 3M strips. So all you have to do is attach that. Here's the cord to recharge it. And then this is the light bar right here. I'm gonna take it out and show you. It's very sleek. I just really like the design of it. I think that it's going to be perfect because it'll fit up under my cabinet and be unassuming, but still provide much needed light for my kitchen. I'm gonna take it all out. It's like it comes with two magnet strips that you can just put under the cabinet. It'll attach to the bottom of the light bar, just like that. So you can remove it as needed to recharge. I'm going to show you the area that I'm going to put it just so you can see what I'm talking about. Now it is daytime right now, so my kitchen is a lot brighter than it would be in the evening, obviously, but it's still definitely much needed. And I will show you what it looks like at night too. This is the area that I wanna put it. So it's kind of hard to see. The window is behind me and it gets pretty decent light during the day because the window shines directly on it but it actually gets the least amount of lighting over here at night because it's not close to any lights. I do have overhead lighting, but it's not great. So I think having something over here will really help because this is where I make my coffee and we use this area for prep sometimes. So I really think that this area is going to benefit from having the light bar. Here's what it looks like on. Now on the back, it does have the on off switch right here so it has an on and off and then it has an auto there are several different settings of brightness or you can have like a warm glow or a medium warm glow or a bright white glow as well so that is also really neat now this is with the lighting oh my gosh i love it so much it is so much brighter so like i said you can adjust the brightness but i think that this is perfect I love how it just adds some extra light in the kitchen. It is still kind of light outside, but this just looks so much better and makes it feel cozier and it's just easier to see everything. So I could not be more happy. This is the kitchen with the light on in the evening, but you can just see how it definitely is a bit darker. So I just put it to on. Now you can see how much light it adds and how much brighter it is. It's so nice. Thank you again so much to Asoko Lighting for sending their under cabinet light to me so that I could have it and try it out and share it with you all. If you're in the market for some under cabinet lighting as well or just anywhere in your home, kitchen, office, wherever, they did provide me with a discount code so I will put that down below for you. And again, it's just one more way that you can up your entertaining, add some little extra touches to your home if you're going to be having guests over and people over, find those places where you can put a few extra touches to make your home more welcoming, more inviting, and just feel more put together. Clearly the Wednesday and then the Thursday of the day of Thanksgiving are going to be your cooking days most likely. If you have things that you can make in advance, I definitely recommend doing that. We're making a homemade pumpkin pie, so I'm gonna try to prepare that in advance and have that in the fridge. But other things you don't have a choice and you have to have them cooking the day of, and that's fine too because that's what makes your house smell amazing and uh, it's just part of it, which you can't really get away from some things having to cook the day of. My biggest thing is once you know your menu, go ahead and try to plan out what things need to cook and when. So you're not scrambling around at the oven. I had one year where we had a potluck and a bunch of family and friends brought dishes over and everything needed to be heated up all at the same time. And I only had one oven. So needless to say, dinner got a very late start that night because we spent a good probably hour and a half reheating everyone's food that they decided to bring over for Thanksgiving dinner. So. Don't let that be you. Try to time it out if you can so at least your stuff is out of the oven or let them know that they can come at separate times so that people can have things heated and ready to go and you're not 
doing like I did that year and having to waste a lot of time on the oven heating and preheating and switching foods out so that everybody's food could be heated and ready to eat. I will eat. show you my serveware as well. I do have a few items that I think are just really nice to have on hand if you're curious and I recommend just having everything in plain white. I think it's really great if you can start a collection of serveware. However, people don't always have room to store things. We have a very small um, storage space in our home so I can't just put tons of extra dishes and things everywhere so I kind of pick and choose the things that I think are the most important when serving guests and those are the ones that I have on hand I also recommend if you're in that same position having things that are just a neutral color palette so creams or whites so that everything can be used for several different holidays and you don't have 20 different dishes for Christmas and Thanksgiving and Easter and whatever holidays you might have. So if you want to do little accents, like I have these adorable leaf accent plates and bowls that I've had for a really long time. These are the things that I'll probably put out to kind of give a nod to that Thanksgiving and fall feel while not having to go out and purchase a ton of just extra dishes and plates and things that I'm going to have to find room to store once the holiday is over so that is another huge tip is if you are just now starting out your collection of serveware or entertaining items look for things that are plain white that can be multi-use and that way you won't have to have places to store a bunch of heavy plates and dishes and these will be not only budget friendly but just storage friendly as well if you are looking to add any pieces to your serving collection, I highly recommend Home Goods. They have such great things at such awesome prices. This is where I went to get my charcuterie board, um, but they have just really, really great things for entertaining. So if you've never been there before, if you have something similar close by, I highly recommend checking there when looking around for serveware. I thought I would go ahead and share with you some of my favorite serving pieces to use, especially for Thanksgiving, but really anytime you might be hosting, these are just great to have on hand. I showed you my home good shopping trip and I found this beautiful wooden charcuterie tray, or at least that's what I'm gonna use it for. It's very large, it's a great size, and then it also has this kind of raised rim along the outside. So I think that'll be really helpful for keeping everything in place because if you put it on a butcher block, then things tend to fall off. So this will hopefully keep everything contained in the board, but I just think it's so beautiful and you can use this for any holiday, anything that you might be entertaining for. So I will show you what my charcuterie board looks like. We're gonna put it out as our only appetizer this year, but just having a really nice wooden tray like this or around this size is really really helpful if you're going to be entertaining a lot and setting things out on the table for everyone then it's not only a functional display but a beautiful one as well I used to have a really large turkey platter and it had a beautiful turkey on it I got it from a store in Orlando called old-time pottery which I don't know if those are open anymore I lost that somewhere in our move which is super sad I really wanted another platter maybe not as big though because it was very difficult to store that so I found on Walmart Walmart for $35 this set of three serving trays and I love it because they're all three different sizes now my only complaint when I purchased them the largest one said 15 inches that's the one I'm gonna be putting my turkey on so it's this size this is actually really not that large but the way I see it is I'm not usually serving a massive Thanksgiving turkey that often when we have guests over so this is actually really a good size to put any kind of main course on and we can just carve up a little bit at a time put it on here and once that starts to empty out then I can always refill it so it's nice because I won't have some huge thing that I have to store. I thought it was really beautiful too because they have this kind of detail right here on the top. They have a little bit of a lip all the way around them as well and I just love the fact that they came in three different sizes. So even though the large one is a little smaller than I was hoping for, um, I just think that these are going to be really useful and for the price, $35, I thought that was such a great price. These are beautiful, heavy, they're plain white, so you can use these for any occasion which is great and I just thought it was a really good bang for my buck. So these are the smaller two and 
they stack really nicely one on top of each other so when I'm not entertaining I can stack them up uh, wrap them up nicely and they will stay hopefully beautiful for many many uh, occasions to come in the future I did want to show you my pretty plates that I was telling you about now I have these will be washed because I haven't used these yet this is from Cracker Barrel it says so this is just a really pretty orange leaf kind of bowl this would be helpful if you were putting like butter or jelly or any kind of condiment that you might want to have out maybe even cranberry sauce if not a lot of people eat it but you still want to have some out for everybody you can use this for that um, and I just think it's so pretty because it has that kind of it's hard to see in the camera but it has like the leaf detail in it so it makes it perfect for fall I also have this bowl I don't even remember where I got this it's not really fall themed per se it kind of has blackberries on it or something but I loved it because of the color it has sort of an iridescent color to it and I like this kind of amber tone I just think it works for fall even though it doesn't really have a lot of fall things I mean these might even be pine cones I think maybe they could be pine cones. I just think this is going to be another nice bowl to have. I think it'll be really pretty to use this year if I need it, so I will keep it out as well. I also have this uh, plate that's a leaf too. It does have a chip on the back of it, which is sad, but I think I might still use it just to put, again, like butter or jelly that I might be sitting out on the table. Uh, it's just so, so cute for the fall season, so I have that one as well. The last thing I have is just another little ramekin. If you can get any of these ramekins, you can usually find them at places like Home Goods or I'm pretty sure even Walmart and stuff would have them. This one I actually got at the Dollar Tree, which I thought was such a great find because these are so useful all the time. So you can see they're kind of a nice size for any kind of seasonings you might want to put in it or something to go along with the sides or if you have a sauce that you might want to put in here with a spoon this one says leaves are falling and autumn is calling and again i got it at the dollar tree so a dollar 25 it's very heavy and yeah i just thought that that was a really great find so i grabbed this one uh, they did have a couple more too but i have some already but i just thought this would be nice to have for the price now, this year I did mention that we are not going to use fine china. I am going to stick with paper plates this year. I know for some people that's a taboo and Thanksgiving is the time to break out the fine china. I don't have enough of my regular plain white plates because I only have enough for our immediate family. So I will not be able to use those. So what I'm gonna do instead is just use paper. I have these plates that I got. Oops. <laughs> I have these paper plates that I got at the Dollar Tree. I thought they were super cute. They have a pumpkin on them, and I love the colors, the orange and the teal. It really matches my decor in my house, if you've seen any of my fall decor. I just thought these would be perfect to have out. I am going to get the big oval-shaped, um, thicker plates for people to eat their actual dinner on, but I thought these plates for a dollar would be perfect for appetizers. For drinks, we're probably just gonna use plastic cups, so. You decide how fancy you want your serveware to be, your dishes. Obviously, if it was just my immediate family eating, then we would probably eat on my white china plates that I have. But since we're having kind of a mixture of a family Thanksgiving and a Friendsgiving, which is what we do every year, then I just usually make it simple and use paper plates. I don't know if that's how you are. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite way to serve guests is for a big meal, but that just usually ends up working best for me, and then that way the only dishes I really have to clean up at the end of it are the dishes that I use to serve everything in so it cuts down on mess makes my life a little bit easier and just at the end of the day everyone's there for the food more than anything so I thought as long as everything is displayed beautifully for them to serve themselves what they're actually eating it on isn't going to matter as much but if you have beautiful Thanksgiving China or beautiful China to use I recommend putting out whatever is going to make you feel great at the end of your event. That's gonna do it for part one of my Thanksgiving prep and planning series. I hope you found this video helpful. If you are going to be hosting Thanksgiving this year, or maybe you're just curious to see how somebody else does their planning and preparation, I will have more videos coming out fairly quickly. Thanksgiving is about two weeks away, which is just crazy to me. I also have my two-year-old or my soon-to-be two-year-old's birthday coming up this coming weekend, so it is a busy month for me, but I'm excited to bring 
giving you all of my Thanksgiving hosting content so that you can benefit from that and hopefully you have some inspiration for your own Thanksgiving holiday or maybe just pass some tips along to you if you're interested in seeing them. On my next video, I'm going to focus on the food. So I will be bringing you three of my sides that I will be making as well as just what I do to prep my kitchen specifically for Thanksgiving. After that, the following video will focus just on my cleaning and prepping of my house and then the last minute planning things that I will need to get done for the holiday. I'm Hello and welcome to my channel or if you've been here before then welcome back. I am so happy that you're here. Today's video is going to be part two of my Thanksgiving prep and planning video that I posted just the other day. So if you find yourself hosting for the holidays, not just Thanksgiving, but maybe you're hosting something for Christmas or whatever holidays you might be celebrating this time of year, then this video could be helpful for you. So in my last video, I kind of broke down the planning process and what I do to plan ahead. I think that planning ahead for any kind of gathering is probably one of the biggest things that you can do. This will not only help everything go smoothly, but it will just help you keep calm and in control for the day so you don't end up frazzled and stressed out because it's already going to be a little bit stressful. That being said, I do think it's important that we get this idea of perfection out of our heads. Of course, we want everything to look beautiful and taste wonderful and be amazing, but I think that when we have this Pinterest perfect idea of what our holiday should look like and try to strive to do that, it kind of, is self-defeating a little bit because nothing is ever going to be perfect. Something is always going to happen and even with the best plan, something can still go not according to plan. So keep that in mind that these are just kind of guidelines to help your day or your event or your gathering go as smoothly as possible. But please don't think that I am in any way trying to say that this will create a perfect holiday or a holiday that goes off without any issues because we all know that things come up and uh, sometimes those things that happen actually make the holiday more memorable. However, it is important to plan and do as much as you can to keep anything from catching you by surprise for your event. Try to have the best holiday that you personally can have and I'm sure your family and friends are not gonna care exactly what the decorations look like and if you stepped out of a magazine for this Thanksgiving as long as you're with the people that you care about and you are enjoying the things that are special to you for the holiday season at the end of the day that is really all that is going to matter today's video I'm going to focus on what I like to do as far as kitchen prep and then I'm going to show you three Thanksgiving menu items if you are looking for something to include in your Thanksgiving menu this year I will show those at the end of the video two are going to be sides and and then one is going to be just a fun dessert uh, that's kind of a little bit more kid friendly because for my Thanksgiving we have a lot of kids that are going to be present and especially I already have my own kids so having things that are kid friendly and that will appeal to little ones as well as the adults is very important so those will be coming to you at the end of the video I thought I would start the video just by telling you what I like to do to prep my kitchen. That is obviously one of the most important rooms when you're hosting a gathering that involves food and people coming over for a meal. So some of the things that I like to do to prep my kitchen ahead of time are obviously to clean it, but I'm going to wait a little bit closer until the actual day. Today is Thursday, so Thanksgiving is exactly one week from today. I will probably clean my kitchen uh, sometime next week, Monday or Tuesday, once it's a little bit closer, so that way I won't have to worry about things getting too messed up again. I do just clean my kitchen normally every day anyways, but I will handle more deep cleaning things a little bit closer. That being said, I did go ahead and deep clean the refrigerator, and I also cleaned out my pantry. So those are two of my top tips of things to do to prep your kitchen for a holiday gathering or just any kind of a gathering that you might be hosting. I love to go through my pantry ahead of time. I will always sit down and make a shopping list, uh, especially for Thanksgiving when you know that stores might be closing early or closed altogether and you don't want to get caught up in the madhouse of people that are also doing their holiday shopping. I will sit down and make a list of things that I know I'm going to need. I will plan out my menu and choose my um, menu items and then break down what each recipe will need and go through my my pantry and see if I have everything 
for that recipe. So for instance, I know I'm gonna be making a pumpkin pie this year, so I will go through and make sure I have everything that is going to be a part of that recipe, and then set those things off to the side and kind of cross them off of my list, so then I know what I will need to be left with to shop for, for my shopping day for Thanksgiving. This is also just a good time to clean out your pantry, so if you see that there's anything that is maybe expiring soon or has expired, or things that are just taking up unnecessary room, maybe you've got two of something and it's both are opened and you know that you can combine them to save space, really just saving space in the kitchen for a big gathering is a good idea because then you have lots of room for anybody that might be bringing things or extra stuff that you might be stocking up on. So that's another really good thing to do is to just clear out your pantry so you have extra space and you know that there's not anything in there that has gone bad or taking up space that you might really, really need for your holiday. Something else that I always make sure to deep clean before I have any kind of event or family coming over to eat or just anybody coming over to eat is my refrigerator. I don't clean my fridge weekly. I usually clean it maybe once every couple weeks or once a month. It just kind of depends on if it really needs it. Uh, sometimes, obviously, if things spill, then you're going to have to give that attention, but it's not part of my weekly chore rotation. However, if I'm hosting or having a big meal where I know I'm going to need the fridge space or people might be storing their food in my fridge, then I definitely want to make sure I clean it out ahead of time. So, I always go ahead and do that probably the week before because this will also give me a chance to take stock of what is in my fridge. So if I need butter or cream or anything that I might have in there already and I don't have to go out and purchase it, then I will know ahead of time and I will check that off of my checklist too. Definitely recommend cleaning out your fridge before a big event so you know exactly what's in there. You can throw out anything that's expired. I did have some expired produce, so we have a compost bin. So the produce went into the compost bin and that allowed me to clean it and free up space for the amount of groceries that I know I'm going to be bringing in to make our Thanksgiving dinner next week. something to be said for a clean fridge but I feel this is especially true when you know that you're going to be having a large gathering and need the space in your fridge for extra food or to just have everything ready to go and you know that everything is clean and organized and you only have what you need so cleaning out the fridge ahead of time I think is invaluable and makes you feel so much better 
something else that's really good to do when you're focusing on your kitchen and what you need to do to prepare it for a meal and having people over is just to think about the amount of space that you'll need. If you know that you're going to have to thaw a massive turkey in your fridge, then you want to try to uh, think about that ahead of time so that you are not left with the day that you have to thaw the turkey and know where to put it. So just some more things to keep in mind. If you have anything that is going to be moving into the fridge, in advance and you know you're gonna need that space, then I highly recommend thinking about that ahead. Usually probably a week out is a good idea. I mentioned in my last video that I think it's also a really good idea to go through any serveware that you might need. So I like to take all of my serving dishes and bowls and things down and I label them with a sticky note once I know what my menu is going to be. That way I know exactly what I have on hand and if I might need to borrow anything from anyone or purchase anything ahead of time. I do have quite a good collection built up over the years so I'm usually okay but you definitely don't want to wait until the day of or the day before and find out that you don't have maybe a bowl that you need or a pan I did have to purchase a roasting rack this year because I do not have one of those and since we do a turkey every year I just thought it was a pretty good investment so I found one reasonably priced on Amazon and went ahead and purchased that this year but I definitely recommend going through your serving collection and taking everything down just for the moment to see what you have, cleaning everything. If you've got things that you store away most of the year and you need to wash them to have them ready, I would go ahead and start moving toward getting that done now. That way it's just one less thing you have to do and then just stack everything up and maybe cover it if you know you're not going to use it um, between now and your meal. That way you know it's washed and clean and ready to go. And again, it is just one less thing that you have to worry about because you can do this ahead of time and it will save you time on the day of. All right, so this first Thanksgiving side I'm going to show you is just some cooked collard greens. Now I am by no means saying that this is the end all be all way to make these. I know a lot of people really for any Thanksgiving recipe are going to have their tried and true favorite way to cook things or maybe it's passed down through your family. So if there's a certain way that you do things then obviously you are going to follow your best recipe this is just the way that we do it so first you want to make sure that you wash all the greens so they can get very very dirty and it's important to make sure that you give them all a good scrub once you do that you're going to trim the actual leaves off the stalk now you can buy these pre-chopped. Uh, it does cost a little bit more and it's not always as readily available. So it just depends on if you wanna spend the extra money or just take the time. But if you do not have time because it is a holiday meal, then having them pre-chopped will be a huge time saver. So it really is up to you if you would like to spend the extra money to have them chopped and ready to go so you can kind of skip this step. Once everything is washed and prepped, you also want to chop up your garlic, your shallot, and your onion as well, so that way everything will be chopped and ready to go into the pot. I'm sure if you type on Pinterest a recipe for making collard greens, you're going to find lots of different ones out there. So I will leave what we do down below, but this is just kind of our own personal way that we do it. Uh, you're gonna go ahead and add in some salt pork as well and get that cooking. It just gives that salty flavor, or you can also use bacon. And then add all of your onion and shallot and garlic into the pot along with some beef broth. 
you'll add in your greens and then just give everything a good stir I am using a Dutch oven for this because we want to make quite a bit so we can serve it for Thanksgiving but you can make as much as you want uh, finish up with adding the rest of the beef broth and give it a good stir again so you can get all the flavors mixed in To give it even more salty flavor, we're adding in a ham hock and then stirring everything again around the ham hock just so you can get all of the flavors mixed together and then topping it off with a little bit more beef broth. Bay leaves and some salt and pepper are pretty much the only seasonings that we used. You are getting the majority of the flavor from the beef broth and then the salt from the pork and the ham hock. So that's mostly where the flavor for this recipe is coming from. You're going to let these cook and simmer for a while and they're going to obviously cook down and be nice and kind of wilty and a little bit more soft and that's when they are going to be perfect to eat. It is the best salty savory side to go with your Thanksgiving meal. This next side is going to be for maple glazed carrots. Now I did find this recipe on Pinterest so I will link it down below. I've never made it before and I have to say that you have to really like the flavor of carrots to uh, enjoy the recipe because the carrot flavor definitely stands out but once you mix it with the maple syrup and some brown sugar this sweetness just pairs so beautifully with it so if you're a fan of carrots or you just want that extra color with a little bit of sweet mixed in with your savory sides I definitely recommend this dish uh, you can use smaller carrots if you want I followed the recipe and just used the long carrots and cut them lengthwise and then just added a little bit of butter and then mixed it in with my uh, maple syrup and brown sugar mixture. Once the carrots are coated, you're going to pop them in the oven for about 40 minutes or so, 30 to 40 minutes. And then I did set my timer for 20 minutes so I could uh, toss them halfway through. This is such a beautiful dish and it adds a lot of really nice color to your table. I topped it with just a little bit of parsley flakes and then it was ready to go. Very tasty and pretty as well. For my dessert, this is my kid friendly dessert that I suggest and it is really fun and easy to make. It's only a few ingredients. So this is caramel apple bark. My uh, stepdaughter Hannah was wanting caramel apples for a dessert and I told her that this would probably be fun to make and a little bit more kid friendly. So you want to melt the chocolate, you're going to chop your apples. Now I did learn a few things from this. I found the recipe also on Pinterest so I'll put it down below. But you want to chop your apples pretty small which I didn't do and then you also want to get as much of the moisture out as possible so I recommend those two things. <laughs> Melt your chocolate really well. Uh, you just kind of have to watch it in the microwave and do increments of 10 seconds to make sure it doesn't burn. You're going to spread it all out onto your baking sheet with parchment paper and then put your pretzels on it. This is a really tasty and fun step. You can do some taste testing along the way but the salty with the sweet is already so good and again it just is a really fun recipe for kids to eat too. Now I have not really used caramel a lot so I was not familiar with it. I definitely would have melted it down a little bit more. So another tip if you are going to make this for your meal and then if you get enough moisture out it will make the apples mix with the caramel a little bit easier too. So those are two things that I definitely learned when I was making this. Once you get your caramel and your apples mixed together you're going to pour that on top of the pretzels as best you can and spread it out. The entire baking sheet will go into your fridge for about half an hour. Once it's done, you're going to melt the rest of your chocolate and then drizzle it over the top 
of the entire mixture and then pop it back into the fridge. Now it does say for an hour, um, but if you're not going to eat it right away, you can leave it in there even longer. Once it's had time to cool, then I just took a pizza cutter and broke it up into pieces of bark and it was good to go. It's very messy and like I said, if you can distribute the caramel and apples a little bit more evenly, I think it will turn out even better, but it was still delicious and would definitely be a fun dessert for kids and grown-ups alike. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really love making these videos because Thanksgiving is one of my favorite holidays and I am so excited to celebrate it every year. We do host every year and while it can be very stressful and busy, it just is also so much fun and I just love having my house smell like Thanksgiving. I love having people over. I love seeing how excited my kids get. Just the whole feel of the big holiday meal and people coming together for that. So even though it can be a lot of work, it is also really rewarding to have everybody here and be able to host such a nice meal. I am so excited that I could bring these videos to you and help you in case you might be hosting and looking for some tips and tricks to help your holiday go a little bit smoother as well. I do have one, maybe two more videos coming. I will be showing you what my Thanksgiving table looks like. So I will um, show you my DIY table runner that I'm making. I found it on Pinterest and I thought it was so pretty and so perfect, especially if you have kids and you're worried about staying on a fabric table runner. This one uses all paper products, so it's definitely uh, kid friendly if uh, you have little ones in the house eating. I will also show you my table decorations. Again, I'm just reusing things I have in my home and things that I found. I will show you what my Thanksgiving table looks like. Hello and welcome to my channel or welcome back if you've been here before. I'm so glad that you're here. Today's video is just a simple Thanksgiving table idea if you're looking for some last minute table inspiration. I had all of these pumpkins out front that I used for decoration in my front door area and they were still in really good shape so they're just the little teeny pumpkins and I really wanted to reuse these one more time before the season was over. So I gathered them all up and I took them in the kitchen and gave them a good scrub. That way I knew they were nice and clean so I could use them in my decoration. Because of us, I'm awake. And because of what I'm feeling, feeling. And that love. This table runner is seriously the simplest and really, really most budget friendly thing you can do. You just need some craft paper, some glue sticks, and some doilies. So I could have gotten the doilies at the dollar store, but I ended up ordering them online because it was just faster. The craft paper was just a big roll and I cut it in half so I could just use one part of it. And then the glue sticks I just had on hand. So really, really easy. And you probably have most of these things at your house. I started out by unrolling the half of the craft paper that I was going to use and getting it exactly where I wanted it on my table. Now I will link the initial uh, Pinterest idea that I saw down below and I kind of went off of what they did but really when it comes to this part you can use your imagination and your creativity and just kind of let it run wild. I played around with it and moved them around until I had a design that I thought looked nice and once I had a few in a place where I thought they looked good, then I went and glued them down and kept going the whole way. So really, really easy. Uh, just make sure you like your design before you glue it down so you don't have to worry about picking it back up again and dealing with that. Once my runner was done, I went ahead and put my pitcher back that I use. This is just a crate and barrel pitcher and I use it as a vase all the time. I did have some wheat in there and then I added some cotton into the wheat. I just started placing my pumpkins around wherever I thought they looked nice. Lucy was helping me and after that I just added in some leaves. My mom went on a trip and brought back some beautiful leaves. We don't really get the change of seasons, obviously, in Florida, so seeing these gorgeous red and orange leaves is really, really nice, and I thought they would make the perfect addition to my table runner and my Thanksgiving table decor. Long, long high fives for miles 
in the spring. Rainbow trout and hummingbird. There really was no rhyme or reason to how I was placing the pumpkins and the leaves. I just put everything on the runner and then moved it around as I saw necessary. I also had some dried baby's breath. I had just gotten this a couple weeks ago and hung it upside down so that it dried out a little bit. I think this makes the perfect fall decor. It's very inexpensive and I think it just adds a really delicate touch to anything. So I tucked a few into my vase with my wheat and my cotton and then I cut a couple extra little pieces just to scatter along the table runner mixed in with the pumpkins and the leaves. Here's what it looks like with the pumpkins and the runner and the baby's breath and leaves all spread across it. I think that it looks really pretty and natural, which is what I was going for. Again, I wanted to reuse things, so this was the perfect opportunity to reuse those really pretty pumpkins that I had sitting out front and let them have one last hurrah before the fall season was over. I did want to add a little bit of lighting. We have kids, so I didn't want to do anything too crazy. I went to the dollar store and picked up some taper candles, and then I found some really pretty candlestick holders for clearance at Target. They were about four dollars each so I just put the taper candles into the holders and I thought it was the perfect touch. It gives a little bit of light and a little bit of warmth. I probably won't light the candles right away with the kiddos. Uh, I'll wait until a little bit later and a little bit closer toward dinner time but I think that this turned out beautifully and it's just a really great way to use natural elements in your decorating and if you do have any of those little pumpkins it's a really great way to reuse those as well as any florals that you might have as the fall season is winding down. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so glad that you came and I hope this might have given you some inspiration if you were looking for some for your Thanksgiving table this year. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Happy Thanksgiving!